The goal of this channel has always been to educate, empower, and liberate trans people. And I need your help to do this. If you or anyone you know has received a tracheal shave surgery, what's called a chondrolaryngoplasty, please fill out the survey. I have three goals in making this video. One, to collect and compile the biggest database of information on tracheal shave surgeries, the risks associated with them, the efficacy of surgeons performing them, and so on, so that we can better educate and inform trans people. Two, educate and inform trans people. I want you to understand that there are vocal risks involved in the surgery, even if they are minor. And I want you to understand what those risks may be. And hopefully with help from the community, we can identify new vocal risks that we might not even know about right now. And three, to pressure and bully surgeons to train this technique better, perform and execute this technique better, and protect trans lives in the process. So please, if you have had a tracheal shave surgery or someone you know has had a tracheal shave surgery, please fill out this survey. It will help our community so much and it will allow us to protect and liberate future trans people. If you don't know what a tracheal shave surgery is, it's called a chondrolaryngoplasty. So basically the surgery works like this. They make a small incision, typically above your Adam's apple in that sort of skin crease there. And then they will burr down and remove part of the thyroid cartilage. Now, in theory, this shouldn't really influence your voice very much. Typically after the procedure, we see acute vocal impairment for about seven to 14 days, but then typically that goes away. Now, the problem is if that vocal impairment doesn't go away. Overall, the procedure is quite minor, but it is quite sensitive and needs to be performed by a skilled surgeon. However, I continue to see cases post tracheal shave where students have long-term and significant vocal impairment. At this point in time, I have worked with about 20 to 30 individual students who have received vocal impairment from a tracheal shave. Some of these individuals have had success or improvement through behavioral training and getting better at using their voice, but many of them clearly are showing some physiological issue that needs to be corrected. When I talk to surgeons and when I look in the literature prior to 2016, risks of vocal impairment from this tracheal shave surgery seem extremely rare. However, I increasingly run into more individuals and more cases of people who have suffered vocal impairment from the tracheal shave surgery. This is not to scare people or say that tracheal shave is a bad surgery overall, but by gathering this information, we can have a clearer picture on what the risks are, assess who the most skilled surgeons are, and address how we can get better remediation of conflicts if they do occur. That in the literature seem extremely small and rare and minor, but in practice, I continue to see people who have long-term vocal impairment from the chondrolaryngoplasty. Recently, I had a former student of mine come back for a lesson, and she had received a tracheal shave about six to eight months ago, right? Well, you know, she had two weeks of voice loss, which is what you should expect if you get that surgery. But then after that, her voice never returned to normal. Her pitch dropped a little bit lower. It was much harder for her to go higher. She completely lost the ability to sing in her falsetto. When she tries to get louder, there is significant air leak and the voice sounds very hoarse and strained. When she reached out to the surgeon about a month afterwards, the surgeon said, oh no, it's okay, just give it more time to heal. And now it has been six to eight months and it hasn't healed. While this outcome is certainly rare, it's incredibly important that we as a community understand the risks of this procedure. From what I've gathered from interacting with students who have experienced vocal impairment from the surgery, they were underinformed of the risks by their surgeon. Theoretically, this shouldn't have a lot of vocal risk. And in the literature, there is very little vocal risk. In fact, we can see this one study, which I'll link down below, which says out of 112 people contacted after tracheal shave, no patients had permanent voice change. Here's another article, which I'll link below. Retrospective review of 31 patients who underwent chondrolaryngoplasty performed by a single surgeon. There were no vocal impairment issues in this research. So if we look at the existing body of research, it looks like voice risk is extremely low. So why do I keep hearing stories of trans people being vocally injured from chondrolaryngoplasty? 
That is what the goal of this survey I've created is to understand. It will help us better assess the risks, it will help us better assess what kind of complications occur, and it will allow us to look for trends in surgeons. Are there surgeons who leave their patients with more vocal complications than others? Can those surgeons be informed of this so they can learn better technique? Can the community avoid those surgeons? Who has the best track record, etc.? All of the information gathered on this survey will allow us as a community to better assess the risks, better increase education, spread awareness, and protect the future for trans people. So please help me out. Spread this survey around. I want as many samples as possible and as many case reports as possible. While this isn't going to be as empirical as you know a double-blind controlled study, it's still gonna be extremely valuable and the more people that submit the information, the easier it will be for us to understand accurately what's going on. Anyone who has vocal dysphoria about their Adam's apple should be able to go and get a tracheal shave without significant concern for vocal risk. Each individual should be properly informed of the risks, as opposed to the risks being glossed over saying, oh, you know, there's a, a, maybe a mild risk of, you know, voice change. What voice change? Tell us what the risks are. You have to tell us what the risks are in order for us to make informed, educated, and safe decisions about our body. It is an absolute shame how if you go and you look around on the internet and you talk to people from the trans community or people in the surgical community, how they'll just say, oh, the risks of tracheal shave are so minor. Tell that to the people I've worked with and met. That is not minor. This impacts their life in a significant way and increases the complexity of what they're trying to do with their voice in such a profound way. In fact, some of these vocal impairments, the only likely solution is more surgery. That should never be the case. Surgeons, do better. So now that we know a little bit about the tracheal shave procedure, how can we know if someone was vocally impaired by it? Well, the typical common signs are a slightly hoarse voice, a voice with a bit of air leak, a pitch drop about four weeks following the surgery, um, inability to have the vocal power that you once had, difficulty sustaining, uh, increased vocal fatigue, and loss of vocal range. In particular, you might find that quiet sounds with your falsetto are much harder. You may also notice a huskier, rougher, or sort of noisy quality to the sound. That is not normal. That should not happen following a trach shave. So if you have found or received anything like that post your trach shave, that's a sign that you maybe received some vocal complications from it. So from my research, I've gathered about four main complications that could occur vocally. So number one is acute complications from edema or blood swelling of the vocal folds. This is totally normal and it's to be expected. You know, this should recover anywhere between seven to 14 days. That's kind of the, the quoted time. So that is pretty expected. Now there's this other complication, which the only person I've heard talk about this in the entire world is Dr. James Thomas. He calls this an interior commissure detachment. And basically what this means is that the vocal fold attachment point on the anterior side actually becomes weaker or detached. And this causes the vocal folds to slightly become more convex. And it causes a lot of the significant vocal issues that we can see in people post trait shave. If you have a significant pitch drop suddenly, if you have a very hoarse voice afterwards, it's quite likely that you might have experienced this anterior commissure detachment. He says, quote, Detachment of the anterior commissure occurs to varying degrees when portions of the anterior thyroid cartilage are removed. He also says the only way to correct this is with a surgical procedure, which is pretty frustrating because if someone goes and gets a tracheal shave, they want a one and done surgery. They don't wanna to have to come back and then experience vocal surgery. So it's so important that we make people aware of this risk and we make surgeons more aware of this so that they will be more careful during their procedure. This seems to be the most likely explanation for the cases of tracheal shave where significant vocal issues occur. Now, another common theory about how vocal impairment could occur from a tracheal shave is this subcutaneous adhesion, okay? Now, we see most of this in the literature happening around tracheotomies, which is where they do an incision down here and they remove part of the trachea. 
But you know, a couple months ago, I saw a popular trans YouTuber talking about this and saying they believed this was their problem. Theoretically, there could be a subcutaneous adhesion event between the tracheal cartilage and the external skin. And one way that you might know if you have that is if you feel like a tugging or a pulling, or when you start to go up, it feels like you're experiencing resistance physical resistance, that might be an indicator that you are experiencing some subcutaneous adhesion. That said though, this is also just as rare to hear about in the literature on chondrolaryngeoplasty. In fact, there are almost no mentions of this whatsoever in relationship to a chondrolaryngeoplasty. However, there are lots of mentions of this with a tracheotomy. So, so far we've talked about one acute and temporary voice impairment that should be pretty normal with the surgery. We've talked about an extremely under-discussed type of vocal impairment, which is this anterior commissure detachment, and we've talked about subcutaneous adhesion. However, there is also one other pattern of loss that I have observed in students that I think is important to talk about. Sometimes it appears after a tracheal shave surgery, students have maladaptive behavior. I see this in individuals who come to me and they say, oh no, my voice has changed after tracheal shave, I'm so concerned. And after playing with their voice a little bit, we can actually get back to what it was behaviorally. Now, my pet theory on this is that when we disrupt the balance and the mass distribution of the instrument, we move around the physical structures, and then we have two weeks where we have to recover and we don't use our voice very much, and then we're concerned about it, we can create a bit of a behavioral feedback loop where we actually end up utilizing our voice in a strange way. And it creates the sound vocal impairment when in reality it's a behavioral issue that is occurring. Now, the good thing about this is if you have experienced this, it is fixable through behavior. I've worked with many individuals who are concerned about vocal impairment after a tracheal shave, who I'm able to make significant strides forward with through behavioral training alone. You know, if you're really trying hard to get your voice back, but it's still not working, you may have a physical issue, which is at the root of your vocal impairment. Out of these four different vocal risks, uh, the second one, the anterior commissure detachment, is really the only one that I can see explaining the really significant vocal impairment that occurs. Three could explain some things that I've seen, but once again, I haven't really seen empirical evidence of this happening post trach shave, only tracheotomy. I imagine it could happen, and I believe you know that YouTuber I saw a couple months ago was pretty convinced that that's what they were experiencing. But that is why we need more research, more education, and more information about this topic. Think about the amazing opportunity we have here. With my platform and the ability to reach and communicate with hundreds of thousands of trans people, we can gain more information about this procedure and its risks than any institutional study would be able to do. So please, let's work together as a community on this and collect a ton of information about this so we can better inform, educate, protect, and liberate trans people around the world. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please just post down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you enjoy my content, and please share this with as many people as possible. I have demonetized this video. I am not looking to get anything from this video. I am simply trying to gain information so that we can protect trans people. So thank you all so much for watching and listening, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.